Hi everyone, this is Nathan from TheEvilGreeter.com. For this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth, complete walkthrough of the new Nook Touch. Um, so here it is compared to the Kindle 3 and the Sony PRS 350. I just wanted to show you really quick the differences in size. Um, this one obviously has a 5-inch screen, but otherwise the, these two have 6-inch screens. The, um, they all have pearl screens, so they're all comparable contrast-wise. They all have the same background color. Everything kind of looks the same, except for the, con the text is different. Obviously, the Kindle has a couple different... Uh, text font types and then the Nook has some different ones and the Sony has one. So tomorrow I'll do a complete comparison of between these ones but for right now I'm just gonna focus on the Nook Touch. Okay so first thing let me show you the hardware on the Nook. Um, it's got this uh, sort of soft texture. It's really actually really comfortable. It's really soft. It's really light too. Um, it's got a micro SD card slot right here. This is the power button. So it's really simple and you got a micro USB port down here. I think these little inlets are for the cover most likely. I forgot to get one. Um, then on the side here we've got these little, they're not really buttons, they're inbuilt buttons and you can press down here to turn the pages. So they're pretty firm and they have pretty much no sound so they're very very quiet so that's pretty nice. And then down here we've got the universal nook button which brings up some options for home, library, shop, search, and settings. So let's go to the home page. BNN they list their top 100 right here where you can go shopping. And then there's also your what's your latest reading right there, what page you're on. And then you've got a list of um, some other books in your library. So you can jump to your library right there. Um, the new Nook's also got a lot to do with sharing. So you can um, you can lend ebooks, you can post stuff about it on uh, recommendations and uh, excerpts on Facebook and Twitter. And um, so they've taken a, the social aspect a lot onto this new Nook. Um, so let's show you the library um, really quickly here. So everything lays out. You can view it in book covers. You can scan through here, use the page numbers as well. If you have a bunch of pages, it'll scroll really fastly. If you just hold down, it'll go instantly pretty much to the end. So it works pretty fast. You can also view the books in a list like this. And see over here, it shows you which ones are Google Books and then which ones are Lend Me Books. Um, so that all of the stuff you have over here, you can view different options for your whole library. So you've got different settings here for it. There's the archive books. You've got your files. The, these are ones that are on your... The Nook partitions a little bit of memory. There's not much for um, ebooks that you can put in the documents folder. And you can also insert a memory card as well. And this is sort of where you can access those. You can have different folders as well as you can see. This is the Nook file one and this is the memory card. And then obviously you can go to the different sections. And if you want to lend your ebooks, you can just jump into this section and set that up. So let me show you what it looks like on an ebook here. Oops, you got it. The lend me section always takes you to the lend me part. So let's go to all books. And then I'll show you this one here. We've got some different on screen um, tasks. So, like I said, you can use the page turn buttons. You can go into settings here, and, and if you want to use the, you can invert these to whichever ones you want to use. Stand. Out of the box, it comes with this one, pages forward, but I kind of like this page forward better, so I use this one down here. Um, so another thing is you've got active hyperlinks. If you see footnotes or if there's a, a hyperlink in here, you can just uh, hit that, and then there's a back right there. Um, so what you do is you tap in the center of the screen to bring up the menus. Um, here's uh, different listings. you got your table of contents, different sections for notes and highlights, and bookmarks will be listed there. And then you can scan through the table of contents that the arrows down here. So then if you want to bring up some settings, you just pop it up in the setting here. You can find or you want to change the text settings. There's a whole bunch of different text options. So one thing you can do is you can turn off publisher defaults. If you have, um, you can embed your own fonts and stuff. If the fonts are embedded in here, you can have different uh, fonts. Um, let me show you with it on. You can with it off, you can't adjust all these different stuff here, um, just the text size, but um, or with it on. But with publisher defaults off, you have all these different uh, text set types you can use, font, site, uh, font types, and there's also settings for line spacing and even margins as well. So that definitely uh, gives us some options on how we want to display the books. Let me show you the different font sizes. So if you hold down these buttons, you can scan through really fast. It's kind of like the Sony readers doesn't refresh. So that's another thing if you'll notice. This is the main thing with the Nook right here is they got the page refreshes a lot quicker because do you see that? 
let me put a bigger font here so it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. So um, when you turn the pages like this, it doesn't refresh the whole page, it's just changing the text. It will refresh the entire page, you saw it right there, it just did it, it'll do that every six pages. So the, one of the drawbacks with this is sometimes they'll be ghosting on the screen. Um, you'll be able to see the text from a previous page, or perhaps if you pop up the dictionary, you might be able to see some uh, background stuff. But usually it refreshes totally when you do stuff like this, so it's really not much of a problem. But uh, I'd like to see BNN add options to turn the refresh on and off. Um, Pocketbooks, they have an option in theirs where you can turn it off. You can set it to specific page numbers if you want it to do every five pages or ten pages or whatever, or you can have it off or on completely. So that would be nice if BNN added those options as well to the, to the Nook. So other options we have down here, you can add notes. So like I said, you can share passages on uh, Facebook and Twitter. You can add your Google contacts on here. Since it has Wi-Fi, you can just send it directly. Um, some other things, you got the dictionary. What's nice about it is it actually pops up with larger text. A lot of times the dictionaries are got really small text, but this one has nice large text. And then there's some other options. You've got the um, go to. You've got a slider down here. You can also enter the page number if you want to go to a specific page number. As you can see, the keyboard works really good. Everything with the touchscreen works really well. Don't really have any problems with it at all. Um, so those were those options. Um, and then with the text sizes, there was a different, few different outline spacings, like I showed you, and the different fonts there. If you have um, bad eyesight, you really want to get the most out of the text sizes. It does go super huge. One of the main disappointments, though, is there's no landscape mode for anything. You can't. Um, some people with bad eyesight like to read in landscape mode because you can get a little bit more that way. Um, and it's really super comfortable holding landscape mode. Hopefully they'll add that option here soon because that's one thing it does not have at all at this point. Okay, a few other things over here in the more. It just shows you um, you can lend it from here, um, recommend it and share it and whatnot. You can also just uh, get the synopsis of the book right there. So as you notice on this top menu, when you have the, um, you can put a, uh, bookmarks like that just by tapping that little nook icon. And then you can also pop up this settings down here by doing that if you don't want to pop touch in the center of the screen. And then your nook button brings up a different menu like I was showing you earlier with the home, the library, the shop, and the settings. So let me show you what we have in settings here. There's a different uh, dial in here if you want to know the exact battery percentage. And it shows you your micro SD card. Uh, memory and as well as your internal memory availability there. Um, so the wireless you can set up uh, obviously with Wi-Fi. It does not have a web browser or anything. It's just for the Barnes and Noble's ebook store and getting subscriptions. So if you're a Barnes and Noble store, you can uh, connect to their Wi-Fi right there and then read ebooks in store. You can read any, pretty much any ebook in store for about an hour. You can also get access to some exclusive content at Barnes and Noble. So the screensaver, here's something that you can do. You can change screensavers. What you do is you go into the Nook, you plug it into your USB, into your computer, and then you create a file under the screensavers. I created my images, and then you can um, load into your own screensavers in here. It also has some presets for authors and nature. And then you can set the screen timeout as well for when you want the screen to automatically turn off. And you set the time. This is the setting for um, page turn buttons, if, which one you want, have, want to have page forward and page back. And there's a few different options and settings and social down here. So uh, let me show you this stuff up here. One cool thing, uh, one quick thing is if you go like that backwards, it'll take you back to what you were doing last. So if you were at the shop last, it'll take you to the shop. If you were reading last, it'll take you reading. And then obviously you saw that other uh, icon up there as well. That will take you back to your reading. It's always up there. So if you want to quickly jump to reading. And then you can just tap this if you want to turn Wi-Fi on and off. Okay, so about the last thing uh, to show you is the store. Let me show you that really quick. Okay, so you access the Barnes & Noble stores. You can either tap on one of these if you want to um, shop on from the, the uh, ones on the home screen. And um, you can pop up the shop icon down here. And so this is the home screen. You can go to browse books and newspapers and magazines. Um, so one thing I noticed is it's not going to have all the magazines. Obviously, like stuff like the National Geographic isn't going to work on this type of device. That does work on a Nook Color but I could not get it to work on this one. 
and then let me show you um, you tap on it and then you get your options to subscribe now you get also get a free trial for magazines and such um, so that's how the shop lays out and you go back to your home right here and um, got different sections obviously for books and all the different um, subcategories you can also you just run a quick search up here using the on-screen keyboard different sorting options and of course you can view this is the list like you can on your home screen as well turn pages by going through here and then once you get to the bottom of the page it'll ask you for more so it doesn't load a whole bunch at once so that way you can keep moving pretty quickly as you can see everything moves moves along quick especially for e-ink everything loads nice and zippy okay so let me go back to the home screen let me show you a magazine or a newspaper. I didn't show you a newspaper yet. And then I'll show you a couple PDFs. So these are some old ones I had from demoing the Android app. So it works like this. You've got uh, different sections. You can just jump to the articles by on top or um, so all the same like text apply text features apply on here, which is really nice. You can still adjust the spacing. You can adjust the the font size. You can add uh, you can add notes. I do believe you can add notes. Yep, you can add notes, highlight, share. The same all the same stuff applies. You can look up in the dictionary as with an ebook. So that's really cool about that. And then one thing you're gonna oops, um, one thing you definitely want to do is use the table of contents to jump back and forth. You can go to the front page. Uh, the front page will list the articles. And you can just tap on the headings if you want, and it'll take you to the article. So I'm impressed with how fast everything loads. Um, the Kindle, using um, newspapers and the Kindle, they, they're rather slow. Um, but on the Nook, everything's really nice and fast, so that's one definite uh, benefit it has with these. So let me show you the couple of PDFs. This is not the Nook Strong Suit by any means. If you want to read uh, PDFs, um, I would not recommend the Nook by, um, for anything. Let's show you here. So what it does is it reflows everything except for on the second to smallest text size. So if you go to the second to smallest text size, it'll get the regular layout, how it's uh, supposed to view. But obviously everything is kind of um, a little bit too small to read, and without landscape mode, there's really um, not a whole lot of options. So that's about um, as good as it gets. Then if you do the text increase, it reflows it, and it'll do odd things with the layout like this. So it's not... The reflow works well on some books, some PDFs, but it's not going to work um, well on all of them. Let me show you some the one that it does work somewhat well on. Let's go back here. Oops. Okay, so it won't open text files. I thought it would, but it won't. It won't open image files directly either. Like I said, you can do screen savers, but it won't open the image file directly. So this is the one that's got a two-page layout. And so if you go like this um, with the font increase, in this instance, it works pretty well because it just reflows the columns into two, into one page like this. And you still get all the columns showing. And then it just goes to the next page. One thing you're not going to get, though, is the images. It's going to be kind of strange, but in this case, it actually shrinks it down. And it, does, it doesn't do a bad job of it. So text-based PDFs are going to be a little better off than, obviously, anything with kind of images or graphs or stuff like that is really, really not going to work very well at all because you'd have to use it in this mode where it's um, text is pretty small. Okay, so the, the only difference with PDFs then is the there's no on-screen dictionary, there's no um, there's no highlights or anything. You can add book, the bookmarks, but that uh, that's about it for here. You got a table of contents here. I'll show you your bookmarks, but you can't add the notes and highlights or access the dictionary PDFs. So the, it's mostly designed, obviously, for EPUBs. You can get EPUBs from Barnes & Noble, and you can also get EPUBs from other EPUB stores, and you can get them from, you know, um, you can rent them from the library. You can borrow them from the library. I mean, not rent them. So it does give you a lot of options for EPUBs, and it does display EPUBs very nicely. Um, so um, for EPUBs, it is a very good reader. It's very comfortable. It's very soft to hold. Um, so I'm going to wrap up the review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com. I'm going to do some comparisons with this and the Kindle, and... Some other e-readers, I'll just, um, also get some tips and tricks, and I have some free ebooks each week for the Nook too, so check that out.